Hey everybody, this is Code Out Kieran. Today we're going to be talking about yo-yos. Now, yo-yos became kind of popular where I'm from around the time when I was 12, around the time I was finishing elementary school, and I tried out a few of them, although I never really got very good at it, and my skills have only grown rustier since then, which is why right now I am using um, the Yomega Brain, my Toy Fair special. It is one that comes with a special clutch that allows it to retract automatically. Um, there are some benefits to using a clutch type. It makes certain uh, string tricks a bit easier. It uh, is a lot more forgiving on a lot of things, but uh, of course, like with a lot of fads, even as they fade away, a large group of people who still appreciate them tend to stick around, and that includes things like the high-speed yo-yos and stuff like that. Yomega and Duncan are both still around and still producing yo-yos to some great success, and back in 2006, this series called Blazing Teens started in East Asia. Now, it's a show that's basically a huge emphasis on the culture of yo-yoing. It has these stories and it shows tips and tricks and stuff like that, and it's actually been popular enough that it is seen in many parts of the world, not just the country it originated in. So, of course, Hasbro finally decided to adopt all that passion and work and bring it over to the United States, which is good. However, they did so by adapting it into their own show. Just like they did with Kaijudo and Bay Raiders. Oh boy, what could possibly go wrong? And here is Blazing Team, the American adaptation of Blazing Teens. Now, they gave it the subtitle Masters of Yo Kwon Do, which sounds incredibly stupid. I mean, come on, it's they're taking a show about yo-yo tricks and turning it into like this fantastical sounding combat show, but I have to admit I am amused by the idea that you can cause mass destruction and chaos by doing yo-yo tricks. <laughs> Just like Yomega and Blazing Teens, the Blazing Team yo-yos are all given a skill level rank ranging from 1 to 5, with 1 being the beginner yo-yos and 5 being the expert level. Now. I was only sent yo-yos ranking from levels 1 to 3, meaning super beginner to like mid-grade dilettante, like a Yomega level 2 or something like that, where somebody is interested in trying out yo-yos but maybe doesn't want to invest a whole lot in it. Now, I do really want to look at the skill yo-yos, but to my knowledge, the reason I was sent up to level 3 is because these are the only ones that have been made available in the United States, or maybe it's because they know I'm terrible at yo-yoing. I mean, I know it's true, but you don't have to rub it in. Starting off, we have the level one battle spin yo-yo, although the packaging also refers to it as gyro combat as one of the uh, alternate language names, which frankly sounds a whole lot cooler. Anyway, the battle spin yo-yo, it's kind of designed to be reminiscent of the show. It has the animal spirit ring on the top, which is where you put your finger, and um, unlike all the other yo-yos here, it actually instead uses a uh, retracting line in here that allows it to return to your hand no matter what you do. It's very much a yo-yo designed for little kids so that they can kind of imitate what goes on in the show. Although this one actually has a gimmick where um, the picture inside, even when you pull out the yo-yo, still spins in the middle, allowing you to simulate the look. As a yo-yo with a retracting string, its easiest comparison is with our old friend Denko Seka, which also uses the retracting string, although this one is actually a bit longer and of course has the magnet on the front to emphasize the battle game. Now, the level 1 yo-yos, because they're actually on a retraction system, mean they can't really do too many tricks with them. They'll automatically return to you every time, no matter what, which is a good thing for, like, kids and stuff like that, and I guess you could attempt a couple of couple of tricks that are all about retracting it. You can even maybe attempt to simulate a string trick or two, but otherwise, you know, they're for kids. They've got the funny ring and the big colorful images on them. They're for kids who see the show and kind of want to mimic what they see on it. It's not really designed to be a terribly sophisticated thing to get you into the hobby. So I can understand where these level ones are coming from, although in my opinion, they're a bit more like level zeros because they require absolutely no skill to operate. Yo dog, we heard yo and yo dog like yo-yo, so we put yo dog in a yo-yo so you can yo-yo yo dog while yo dog yo-yos dog. Also available is the larger Echo Strike FX. It's a larger version of the Type 1 yo-yo that still has the retracting string and the spirit ring. However, 
This one also has a battery case, which allows it to have some lights and sound effects. Like for here, we have the dragon. And it'll make a roar and light up a bit on the bottom when you press on the face here. And you can also pull it out. Which causes it to make a, uh, make a sound as though it were being whipped around. Now, the uh, Echo Strike effects also has a pair of uh, additional coins that act as faces on it that allow you to change the sound it makes. Like, here we're going to install the monkey. Oh yeah, that's not going to be annoying really quickly. For level 2, we have the Beast Wrangler Easy Return. Now, as the name implies, it does have a clutch system inside of it that is designed to grab this yo-yo and reel it up automatically when it gets too slow. Easiest point of comparison is, of course, the Omega Brain, and the tops share a lot of similarities. They are a similar size, they are a similar shape, although the Beast Wrangler is a bit more of an inline profile, which gives it the impression of being for loop tricks. Um, beginner type yo-yos are considered to be very, very forgiving yo-yos, partly in the fact that they're able to retract on their own, so even if you manage to kind of lose tension on the string, you can send them up and down to go again. Although, an interesting thing about these yo-yos is the price. The Omega Brain's recommended price is $10, whereas the Beast Wrangler is being sold for only $6. That's actually a pretty impressive price difference. And as you'll see in a minute, its performance actually really isn't that different. Now, as you can see with the Beast Wrangler, is it of course will come in several types. This one, it has the green monkey on it. The back, of course, has the dueling dragons. I guess uh, somebody needs an earth serpent in here, but you can kind of see through this kind of weird turbine shape here that, yes, then indeed there is a clutch system in the back. It is also really heavy compared to the Omega Brain. You can tell they're using a denser, more populous plastic, so that also has some effects on performance that I'll go over. Now the level twos are a clutch type yo-yo, so like the Omega Brain, they are designed to, once they lose enough spin, retract automatically after a while. Man, that was too good a throw. Um, but yeah, it's uh, it's a lot like the Omega Brain. It has a much shorter string than the Omega Brain, and you can't like cause it to come back up like you can with the Omega Brain if you make a mistake on launching it. Although I guess that does kind of save on your hands because bringing those yo-yos up at full speed can actually really hurt. But for a clutch type yo-yo that costs only six bucks, it is definitely something worth looking at. It, has a lot of weight to it, so it's able to stay down for actually quite a long time. Aside from the fact that you can't really retract it when you make a mistake, it is still a very good yo-yo for beginners, and for I actually kind of recommend it because it is just so much cheaper than most other clutch type yo-yos out there. Unfortunately, the fact that it doesn't respond to you tugging on the string means that you can't remove the O-ring to convert it into a regular yo-yo. This is the Omega Firestorm. The Firestorm is a special kind of yo-yo in that it is designed to have both the features of loop trick yo-yos and butterfly string trick yo-yos by having the clean outside of the loop type while also having the wide base of the string type. This means it is called a hybrid yo-yo. And hybrid yo-yos suck. Which makes the Morph Master, the Blazing Team Level 3 yo-yo, an interesting experiment. Now the level 3 yo-yos I'm assuming are the type of yo-yos designed to appeal to amateur yo-yo players who want to try out some tricks and stunts but don't necessarily want to invest a lot in a yo-yo. At this thing, the Morph Master costs $10. Now the Morph Master is an interesting experiment in that its default mode is actually as a string trick butterfly yo-yo. However, the sides actually have some special clips on here that when unplugged allow the pieces to come off and be flipped around, allowing the yo-yo to change configuration into a loop type yo-yo. Now, the fact that it can change between the two is actually really fascinating because unlike the hybrid yo-yos, you're not necessarily sacrificing the performance on one end in an effort to gain performance on the other end. With the hybrid type, you just resort with something that's bad at both. But if this experiment pays off, then you will have a yo-yo that is good at both string tricks and loop tricks just with a simple click. Now, as an inline yo-yo, the changing yo-yo actually works really well. It's super duper heavy and very nice and flush with the string. It feels very satisfactory and I feel like I could get some really good tricks off of it. Like a lot of the basic loop tricks I was showing off before. And it, it, it feels very good in that fashion. Like I said, really, really heavy so you get really good momentum off of it. The problem, however, is when you decide to change it over to butterfly. Now, 
the fact that it uses the clips means it does so very quickly. However, the thing is, all that weight now, all that really heavy weight that was nice and focused towards the center before, it's now on the outer wing. So now whenever I throw it, it gets really, really, really wobbly and inconsistent. It just, it, it, it's balanced. Any problem with the design on this yo-yo suddenly becomes like 10 times worse with the way it's designed. Otherwise, you know, I probably would have recommended that this thing screws the special parts together rather than having the clip system because I think that could be a big source of the imbalance. But otherwise, it's a very, very, uh, yeah, I can't even get it to do a string trick because it's so imbalanced. So, so as long as you keep this thing in the regular Imperial loop trick mode, for a $10 yo-yo, it performs very well thanks to all the extra weight inside of it. Otherwise, I'd steer clear of the butterfly mode. The Morph Master actually contains a metal bearing system that's a bit fancier than the nylon bearings you usually find in regular fireballs. This means that hopefully with a little grease and some breaking in, it'll probably perform a bit better, but the balance issues on the butterfly mode don't seem to want to go away. Now that I've talked about the toys, I guess now I'm obligated to talk about the show. Now, based on what I can see here, before even watching any of the show, I'm going to make a few guesses based on the picture that was printed on the shipper I got all these samples in. So let's take a look at this. Um, let's see, this guy in the center here, he's uh, wearing red, and of course he's centered, so I bet he's the main character. However, uh, he looks a lot younger than all these other characters, so I bet he's really annoying and voiced by a female voice actress. Um, okay, this guy over here, he's fat and he's wearing glasses, so he's gonna be like the funny smart one. Really know more about that. Next we have the girl. Of course, you can only have one girl to a team because, of course, girl is a personality trait and not something that represents half the planet's population. But here's the thing, she's wearing pants and she's in blue, so she's got to be like some kind of super rebel. Now, Draco Malfoy over here, he's dressed in dark clothing, so I bet he's like the really edgy one, or if not flat out evil. And over here, let's see, he's in white and yellow and he's got the long hair. He's, he's Tommy from Power Rangers. There's... There's no getting around that. That's Tommy from Power Rangers. That's the White Ranger right there. So how close was I? Yes! <laughs> I got it completely 100% right! Oh joy! Oh rapture! Oh no! After an introduction where a guy is happy he found something buried in the sewer, all of our characters meet at the Y Games! Admittedly a bit of a contrived method. I'm Wilson. Oh, Parker. Parker! Why are you watching a stupid yo-yo competition instead of getting me pictures of Spider-Man? Oh, cheer up, Scott. There's always a slim chance the judges didn't see all of your mistakes. <laughs> well, if anybody knows what a flawed yo-yo trick looks like, it's definitely you, Johnny. Are you two seriously trash-talking over yo-yo tricks? Who asked you, Maddie? Yeah, Maddie, don't underestimate Scandigo. Their yo-yos get stolen by a goose and a chase scene begins. Okay, I'm sure at this point you're noticing that the show's animation is, well, kinda bad. Not only are some budget reduction tricks really obvious, but it also uses this strange kind of tweening method that makes everything look really uncanny. The only shows that really look good with this method are ones like My Little Pony that are built to use this kind of animation system from the start. Not to mention none of the lip flaps really match up to any of the audio being said. I guess the animators just didn't care. Finally, at the top of an abandoned skyscraper, they find the master. I am Lao Shi, and my pet duck has brought you all here because the world is in danger. Yeah, I'm with these guys on this one. What? I will teach you how to master Yo Kwan Do fighting so you can... Huh? No, that would have actually been funny. And we know kids don't want well-written comedy. They want stupid random. <laughs> oh, so it's a bunch of young kids being taught a secret ancient martial art by a wise and old master. I've never seen that before, except everywhere. Uh, that must be why I can't do Yo Kwan Do. My yo-yo's broken. It isn't the yo-yo, Parker, it's you. Oh, oh, so the story is that the kids are trying to find various shards of the core of darkness, which if touched by a person will infect them and cause them to run amok with dark energy and- I'm sorry. 
wasn't this supposed to be a show about yo-yos, about how amazing yo-yos are and the sorts of yo-yo stunts you can do? I mean, they do occasionally do yo-yo tricks in the show, but they go by so quickly that I can't really like feel like I can analyze or learn anything from what they do. And except for that one guy, why don't any of the villains of the day use yo-yos? But yeah, that's a legitimate question. Except for this Kylo Ren wannabe, none of the villains of the day wind up using like temporary dark shadow yo-yos that would actually fit in perfectly well within the context of the show. Not to mention none of the characters are really likable. All of them have that kind of rebellious complaining jerk attitude that focus groups are convinced kids like. Also, while I'm not against women voicing young boys in television shows, couldn't they have found somebody who could make Parker sound older than five? There is no getting around this blazing team. The show is not good. It, it is pretty much everything you could do wrong in a show. It looks very, very designed by committee, just like Redekai and something like that. And I can't really find any of these characters enjoyable. Every single character in this show really grates on me, especially since once the main character here, who's supposed to be like the earnest, wanting youngster, finally gets his powers, he falls in line with the rest of the cast as just being this unlovable, complaining jerk. And I, I don't like anything about this show at all, and it seems to forget that it's supposed to be about yo-yos. The combination of the bad story writing, lousy characters, and lazy animation has made me think of this as like the pixel pinky of Hasbro shows. It's really a sad day to say that because I usually herald them as the paragon of quality kids entertainment. So Blazing Team might have been lousy, but if Hasbro decided they'd be better off doing it on their own, how does it compare to Blazing Teens? Last year, the most recent version of Blazing Teens, known as Blazing Teens 5 Legendary Warriors hit, and I guess we'll have to see if it's any better. Wait, 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 hold on a sec. Rewind that. Is... Is that a cute robot girl doing yo-yo tricks? Aw oh, man, 10 out of 10, this show's better already. We start with this epic scene, with two ancient kung fu masters standing atop a mountain, surrounded by storms and wind, and they do yo-yo tricks at each other. Turks a star! Inverted Eiffel Tower. But the Eiffel Tower hasn't been invented yet! Neither has Texas. No! Okay, now I'm sure the show's just pulling my leg and this is some sort of cheesy movie in universe that the real main characters are watching, right? Wait, that really was the intro? I was supposed to take that seriously? Oh boy, it's gonna be one of those kinds of shows. The actual show is about a boy named Leon, a novice at yo-yoing who one day discovers a small animal spirit that is drawn to the spinning his yo-yo creates and becomes his friends. Unlike Blazing Team, Blazing Teens 5 is a lot more down to earth. These aren't kids running around saving the world, they're kind of more mundane people learning how to do the basics of various yo-yo tricks and encountering spirits that resonate with the spin of their yo-yo and the passion in their hearts. But still, like the intro should have taught you, this show's main selling point is that it is just terrible. But not Blazing Team terrible. Blazing Teens 5 is horrible in that exquisite, wonderful way that results in lasts for hours. I mean, come on, the epic showdown at the end of episode 1 is the long sleeper. Speaking of which, apparently the spirits are actually powered not only by the spin of the yo-yo, but can be made even stronger by doing tricks and stunts. So if just doing the long sleeper is enough to summon this little tiger guy, what sort of amazing monster with all these fancy tricks will this guy be summoning? <laughs> Leon goes on to have little competitions each episode, building up friendships and increasing his experience by- Oh, oh, oh no. Stop it. Stop it. If I laugh any harder, I might die. Despite the show being at its best when it's rolling and just how terrible it is, there are a few legitimately good episodes, including episodes 17 and 18, the first time we meet the robot girl from before, named Ellie. Ellie was created by Francis, the show's antagonist who believes that strength, skill, and discipline are the most important things in yo-yoing, and everything else for that matter, and that passion and friendship only inhibit the perfection of such traits. And who better to exemplify the traits he values the most than with a literal machine? I guess Francis doesn't have a sense of irony. 
Ellie initially challenges Yo-Yo Superman. By the way, there's a character in the show named Yo-Yo Superman to a public competition. Yo-Yo Superman turns her down because those sorts of spectacles really aren't his thing, so instead Leon steps up to the plate. While Ellie winds up completely outclassing him in skill, Leon's passion and the excitement he displays when he finishes some rather complex tricks for the first time ever resonates with the crowd, causing them to support him despite Ellie's superiority. This experience causes Ellie to have a massive existential crisis. Being a robot, things like passion and luck are completely foreign concepts to her. It actually sort of turns the traditional hero character on its head. Most of the time, the main character of these sorts of shows are full of passion but have to learn to appreciate discipline. Ellie is pure discipline and has to literally learn what passion is. Credit where credit is due, Ellie is probably one of the best plays of the robot card I've ever seen. And I mean that. Kudos to you, Blazing Teens 5. By the way, all you Western writers out there who want to learn how to write a good yin-yang story, Exhibit A! Too bad the rest of the show is pretty terrible. It's more engaging than Blazing Team, but that's only because it's like Scandigo falling into the so bad it's good category because everybody takes everything just so seriously. I can understand why Hasbro didn't want to dub it, and frankly they made the right call in that regard, but that is no excuse for the approach they wound up going with. I mean, Blazing Teens 5 at least seems to understand what sort of show it's supposed to be with the emphasis on fundamentals and tricks. It doesn't even really feel like a merchandise-driven show, but more of a show that pushes a culture and a set of skills that just so happens to use Aldi brand products. I feel like I could watch Blazing Teens 5, copy the tips and tricks they show off in each episode, and actually get better at yo-yoing as a result no matter which yo-yo I use. Blazing Team makes me want to whack someone in the face, with or without a yo-yo. The Blazing Team show is an example of how to do everything wrong. The characters are cliche, the writing is unengaging, and it doesn't even really embrace the product it's supposed to be merchandising. Try to imagine that every yo-yo in the show has been replaced with a Rubik's Cube, and I bet you would not be able to see a single difference. I can't believe I'm about to say this, but Redekai at least embraced the toy it was supposed to be promoting. It is a dark day when Redekai gets compared favorably to something. So that is a look at Hasbro's Blazing Team. Now, the show is frankly incredibly terrible, but the toys, especially with the way their price point has been developed, actually make them a pretty interesting alternative to a lot of the more mainstream yo-yos that are already out there. So the toys are at the very least worth a look, and we'll see if more of the products come out and I'll be able to show off like the level 4s and the level 5s, some of the really higher grade yo-yos, but until then, I think we can all agree, the Blazing Team show would definitely benefit from adding a cute robot girl and a yo-yo Superman. Until next time, this is Kodak signing off. Too bad it's Sunday. The building would have been full tomorrow.